I've had a chance to do some soul searching and some thinking here. And I've come to the conclusion that I'm just going to go back to playing franchise mode how I play franchise mode. Because I've gotten away from that, trying suggestions, etc., things like that, especially on the coaching side of things. And this year, it simply did not work whatsoever. Um, yeah, and I keep getting, and most of the things you notice is you get suggestions one time, like do this, look for chemistry, do that. And then when that doesn't work out, the whole mess of comments saying, oh, you're stupid for doing that. Yeah, that doesn't matter. This matters instead. You know what? I'm just going to go back to doing what I do. So, yeah, the experiment hasn't worked. Obviously, we're going to have to kind of sell this year. We're in a rough spot with no first, at least of our own, <laughs> because we uh, traded it to move up in last year's draft. It was still a good move. And again, shouldn't have been a bad team this year, but here we are. Yep, this is a bad team right here. That's a bad team. Good stuff. Alrighty. Well, what was this guy? He was a 2A forward, right? Yeah. We have plenty of trade assets. That is the good thing. These two guys in particular are very, very good trade assets. And you know what? We're probably going to do some uh, moving around here. For sure, we're gonna be trading some of our uh, our guys. Like we're not gonna, we're likely not gonna have um, Bennington back. So pro probably time to sell him to a team who needs a goaltender. So let's do that first. Find a team who needs him. We'll retain because that'll help us stay at least near the cap floor. But yeah, Bennington's pretty much the major piece. We could probably. Again, I don't, we don't even really need picks. Like, that's a thing. But I might grab one because I don't really know what else to get. Ooh, you know what? Damn, they don't want him. I was thinking of the Capitals just for a, a lefty. Uh, two-way defense, but at the same time, we can hold on to Hannafin for longer if we choose to. Because he's pretty solid. Yeah. I could just go for uh, some more picks here. But really, I mean, again, we don't need him. We... <laughs> We're ridiculously set. Like, that's the thing. We're going to sell pieces, and we just don't need to sell pieces. Or we don't need picks. We don't need prospects. Like, we're, we're actually relatively set. The only thing I'm maybe missing is some kind of a power forward guy. So, like... Hello. I wish I could. I mean, I could probably go over the top and snag him. They did sign Marner, too. I would have to, if I was to trade for someone like this, Mitchell Seabrook, who hasn't actually done that good this year. 34 points in 61 games played. He's on a plus. He's a plus guy. I mean, we could go over the top for something like that. Like, go a little bit crazy here. But first off, let's just sell Bennington. What I was thinking about doing for Bennington was going after, like, a high top four lefty or an elite prospect lefty. Because if we can't get back Hannafin, yeah, we're saving some money on some of these forwards. But at this point, I actually feel like we're missing some stuff. Um, I like Tuck. He is extended to a really decent price, but, like, it's not for, like, a super, super long term. Vaborny, is he going to be an amazing power forward we need him to be? Can he produce is a big question. I'm not I'm not really concerned about a lot of our top six. I think Noob Savoie, these guys will get back on the production side of things. It's just a really bad year. So, like, I'm not going to go crazy and blow stuff up. I will be making some smaller changes. We will have to sort of retool a bit. 
But, I mean, when you look at the, the forward core we have, I mean, Noob Sava, there's your duo. Montoya Squires, there's your other duo. You have Viborni as, you know, a power forward type guy. We have Stone for now, but he is beginning to decline. We kind of need another one of those power forward type guys. Tuck is there for the time being, but, you know, we're missing another sort of power forward. Uncle Skoden is more looking to me like a third-line utility guy. And you know what? We got him to a contract that says third-line utility guy, so I have no problem using him as just a third line type guy i mean skoden then we have glass still we got bednar champion all these other guys i mean we should be fine i, I just think we're missing that uh, one big power forward piece now on the flip side the defense you have hanifin you have Provera, both of these guys for relatively long term but I mean, sorry, you can have them both for long term, but price what might be an issue. Myers now doesn't want a contract, so we're going to have to probably overpay him next year and then try to do another RFA thing with him, which is fine. He's RFA right now. We can tender him. That's not a big deal. It's, on, it's annoying, and it was uh, on top of crap that we didn't want to have to deal with. We're going to likely keep Haz is going to just be a long term top six. He didn't pan out the way we wanted, but you know what? As a mid first, getting a solid top six DFD is still okay. We're going to keep using him as OFD this year just because I got him there already. We're seeing if that does anything. But as I said, likely going to switch him back to DFD playing in that top six. Frolov might be the same thing. I mean, I was hoping for like a top four on that left side. I was hoping he would become that. I just don't know. 2180 depends on the jump. Cleary might be that. But like there's, there's too many maybes, you know. So for Bennington, I mean, we could try to recover A first. Again, we don't need to draft, but what, where else are we going to put the value, right? So at this point, you probably just kind of put it in the bank. And we'll be able to really trade anything and everything. And we got to hope that Benoit can jump up. So on a very good contract for three years. We need him to be a starter next year. I'll probably just use him as a starter regardless next year. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, what I'm thinking for a lot of this stuff. We have tremendous good players. We just need the cohesion. We need a bit more long-term capability, especially on the left-hand side. So, and that's where I think some of those, uh, those elite forwards will come in. We don't really need them, but we could use some... Uh, Elite lefty guys, so probably use Bennington for the pick I was looking at before. Who the hell's wasn't? Columbus's, I think. I believe it was. Yeah, Columbus. Might be able to snag their pick. They might not want to give, they don't have their pick. Well, at least we're not the only ones. Who has Columbus's pick? There it is, and they don't want to give it up, and there wouldn't be enough value anyway. I'm trying to see if there's someone there who wants Bennington and also has a decent first, but not really the case. Although, there's Philly who doesn't want... Yeah. No real reason for them to have Bennington. Alright, it's likely going to have to be a playoff team. They're listed as a rebuilder, and so, yeah. Who the hell had our first? Who would we trade? It was like St. Louis or something, I believe. We might be able to get back our own first, but we're having such a bad year that we probably won't. I thought it was... Who do we trade up? It's St. Louis, right? Or that's the pick we got. No, yeah. Okay, their pick is actually not bad. I could grab their pick. With retention, that might go through, although they don't want Bennington. Yeah, I know. We traded with someone first and then traded with St. Louis, I'm pretty sure. So I actually can't remember. Maybe it was Chicago or something like that. Something weird. I just legit can't remember. Yeah. I'll, I can search through every single friggin' team, but... Alright, well we found it. It's Florida who has our pick. And I guarantee you if we get this back, we're going to do incredible. But the thing is, they do want to give it up. Which means, if it wins the lottery, we can take it back. But here's the thing. We don't really need... I would almost rather trade the pick itself. Uh, let's see. Is there any sort of power forward up here? No defenseman. Righty. God damn it. Here's a lefty defenseman who we don't know. You know what? That actually might be good to get that. 
Wow, actually. This actually might not be a bad idea to have uh, our own lottery pick. We could trade for it at the draft. Bennington alone isn't going to be enough to get in. If we got some kind of a mid-first, there's really no, no real reason to get that mid-first unless to use the trade up. I'm thinking if we did that with Bennington. Or we could try to get our own pick back. But I, I don't know. I'm thinking if we <laughs> try to make our team worse and we start doing better, we decrease the value of the pick. But maybe not. Anyway. Bennington and some retention. <clears throat> Let's see here. This is going to be a busy trade deadline. A lot, of, a lot of thinking, a lot of wheeling and dealing. It's just what we have to do. Who was I thinking? Well, we could try. We could actually try to get our own pick back here. But it's going to take a lot more, obviously, than just. Yeah, they don't want. Oh, they do have Bobrovsky on the block. But they have Spencer Knight. Are they going to be a playoff team? Mm, they could be. I mean, this could set them over the top. I don't know. I mean, they're trying to get rid of Bobrovsky. That makes sense. They already have two solid goaltenders. I could take his contract back. That would help him out a lot. Let me take your contract back. We'll give you a Bennington. I mean, it is only one year left, but they'd still kind of like us for taking that contract off their hands. And obviously, that ain't going through, but how much do they value us taking that contract off their hands? Now they're going to have two really solid goaltenders for the playoff push. What else could we give them to help them out here, make the playoffs, etc.? Not really any roster players because... We don't have anyone that we want to give up that could help them, right? Not really. Stone has got an extra year. Tuck is extended. I don't want to give him Nick Roy. I really like Nick Roy. What do they want? Everyone who's NHL ready, essentially. Except for Coughlin, Cousins, Frolov, Mikheyev, Stevenson. Yeah, most of these guys I want to hold on to. No goalie prospect, as kind of to be expected. I could throw this guy in for some extra value. Obviously, it won't be enough. But now it's got to be something that they want. Might have to be one of those uh, elite dudes. And I kind of wouldn't mind giving one of them up. Or I can start lower top sixes we may not want. Champion we're holding on to quite obviously. What are you? Yep. Throw that guy in there. I just want to see because taking Bobrovsky's contract back might, might help us out a lot. None of this is on the block though. I mean, I could give him Nick Roy. He's got way more value than he should right now. I I really like him. I'm not going to lie. I love the guy. I mean, look how good he is. Do I want to risk them signing him? I mean, likely he will hit free agency. He will cost a lot more, though. Anyway, let's see what else I can give up. Don't want to give up a grinder. Playmaker you can give up. I'm just going to keep seeing what they're saying here. All right. Look for some more before I have to give up one of those big, big pieces. I might just have to do it. I don't think this is going to be enough. And I don't think there's anyone else that I want to give up. Bonnet. Oh, OFD definitely can throw him in there. That's that's the max right there. Oh. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yep perfect all right so i'm all about that got our own pick back which is fantastic we did trade away a star player in bennington but we got back bobrovsky 
And he will split time a bit better with Benoit. And he'll be off contract by this next year. So there we go. Glass still injured has about to come back. We get our own pick back with the one piece we were going to sell a bunch of other prospects who we had excess of. And now it, and now it's okay to draft pr relatively heavy-ish again. We won't be overloaded. And we still have a couple medium elite uh, guys that we could possibly trade or at least maybe not right now, but later down the road or hold on to them either way. We're still kind of missing that big power forward. So that's what I want to hold on to those guys for, right? We need, we'll, we'll need a Mark Stone replacement. Vaborny looking more like a second liner the more he kind of is, you know. So, more time that goes by on that. And then at that point, you got to hope Montoya and Squires can just tear it up as a duo. And Vaborny just needs to support him. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's still, I like... I like the outlook of the teams, like and and where we're going. I think we're still maybe missing one key piece on the forward end. We can easily find that just to make things quote unquote perfect, as perfect as it gets. But yeah, yeah, it's hard for me to give him Nick Roy. Um, speaking of which, I want to see if I can extend that dude or extend anyone else here. Yeah, Myers doesn't like life right now. I'm going to try to extend Nick Roy here. Dude, that's like, that's so sick. I'm going to give him like a three-year deal here. That's how that's how much I like the guy. Give him a fourth liner, a three-year extension. And this will take him up to at least 32, 33. He should not be declining by then. Even if he is, this contract, very low, very good. 1.5725. I mean, that's insane for what this guy brings to the table. Oh, F sorry, 575, but yeah, it was 5725 on my calculator. There we go. Do that. Sorelli, no. I mean, he's not bad, but I mean, I just got him to pay, pay the bills. Or pfft, He's actually really not bad defensively. We don't really need another center. Is he better than, do we want to move on from Stevenson or something? We do have Stevenson for an extra year, though, at a really solid price. Who we changed to a left winger. Is Sorelli lefty or righty? He's a lefty. We also have Mikheyev still, who's a right winger on the left-hand side. Could make Sorelli that. How's he for chemistry? Well, right now, he's pretty good. Don't know if this is our coach. Do I want to keep Sorelli around? He's actually really good defensively. And he can take face-offs. I mean, he's very interchangeable. What kind of extension does he want? Same kind of thing that he wants. You know what? I'll give him a one-year. I won't, I, I won't commit to him like Nick Roy. But I kind of I kind of actually like him. He's very well built defensively. So yeah, I'll keep him around. And Jaron Myers is going to be the tough one, but like I said, we should be fine, especially next year. If we have to kick him like a bunch of cash to stay with us for one year, remain as an RFA, that's fine. We'll we'll, we'll be able to get him signed long term. I'm not really worried about it. I'm just a little upset. We weren't able to get that done this year, as we should have. Bobrovsky wants an extension. Lol. I mean, I could keep him around to be a backup next year. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. But I could also go sign someone in free agency. Yeah, as a backup, he hasn't been great. Again, he's been on Florida. who hasn't been an amazing team. But, I mean, his numbers... Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> Let's wait to free agency. All right, so that's a trade. We got our own first back. Lucky us. Cost quite a bit, but not as much as it could have. Really helped that we had all that cap space to take that Bobrovsky contract off their hands. Now they can move around for what they wish. The thing is, do I want another first? I don't really need one. We don't really have that many other assets we want to burn or give away here. I would like to get maybe some more mid picks because we only have our own seven here. We can gain two more picks. So let's actually do that. Look to do that, at least. I'd love to get another second. I just don't think that's going to be in the cards. You know, like I said, I want to hold on to the grinder for a bit. Yeah, we actually don't really have anything else. 
We pretty much just gave away all of our excess stuff, so we can't even get a quantity of picks. We have to almost go for quality. But for to get, you know, our own first back at a year like this, I think it's a good thing. Now watch us tear it up. <laughs> but we will have the value to be able to uh, grab some other stuff. I do have that high backup guy that, you know, but, I mean, 2171. That guy's actually looking like he's going to be very serviceable. Backups are a dime a dozen, but if you can grow them internally, I'd rather do that. So, yeah, that's that's going to be our trade deadline. I simply think I don't want to give anything else up, so I won't. There we go. No more Bennington. Moving on. And I'll leave the lines as they are. Let's go, Vegas. Tank, Vegas, tank. Now we're going to do good. We, we made a change. We're going to do good now. And decrease the value of that pick. But the good news is we didn't give up a whole lot to get our own pick back. So... That's the thing. Is Florida going to make any more moves to, like, with the cap space we freed up for him? I hope they do. I did that for them. Has his back. Looks like Coughlin's pretty morale out of this at this point, so I'll probably let him go after this year. Anyway, get Has back in. It's only a plus one for the guy. It's nothing for Nilsson, though. I guess I'll keep I'll keep has here for now as the OFD. All right, we got Roy and Sorelli back. We won, of course we did. We're gonna win a bunch of these games, aren't we? Don't want to try has back on the top again. It is still a plus. That kind of wanted to. Yeah, screw it. Let's give him the massive ice time. Works out better for overalls that way, too. Oh, my God. Every time. Every time. <laughs> yep. Here we go. Time to win out the season. So we got our own first back for a shit ton of hours. I mean, I, 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 I should expect it at this point, but fuck this game, to be honest. While we're on the subject, just fuck this game sometimes. It is incredibly silly. Oh, boy. That's when you just wanna you wanted to hold on to that pick and just trade for it. But what the hell ever, man. The game just continues to go out of its way to screw us over here in this in this franchise mode. Like it it, it it's like clockwork at this point. Like fine. If we make the playoffs, fine, that's our goal anyway, but we coughed up quite a bit to get our own pick back. So I'm a little bummed about that. Like, granted, most of the stuff that we coughed up isn't going to become anything that crazy good. But, <laughs> it's annoying still. Because now we might not get one of those uh, lefty, you know, elite guys who we actually kind of need. <sighs> Hopefully we get lucky if we miss the playoffs still, but we're now a 500. We're, what, 24, 32 and something, and we've now decided let's win almost every single fucking game. I think we have won, and, or if, we, if we've lost, we've lost an OT. It's absolutely ridiculous how this game is that, with that kind of stuff. Like, why? Really? You, getting rid of our better goaltender made us a good team? I don't get the logic behind it. And this kind of stuff just infuriates me. Just how consistent it is with the weirdness. I get, like, but then other times it's not. Other times it makes sense. But then, just in this one, I don't know, man. I just had, like, a vision. Because I'm a Sharks fan taking over Vegas that the year that we give up our own pick, just like the Sharks gave up their own pick, they missed the playoffs, it'll, like, win the lottery. And I had a feeling our pick would just win the lottery right there or something. We could add our pick of the litter. 
So we get it back, and what happens immediately? Our team actually starts winning. Because of course. Of course they would. Why wouldn't they? Oh, man. Well, that's what it is, I guess. Let's win a bunch of games. Back below 500. There we go. That's a bit better. Are we done with our amazing streak? Don't think so. All right. Before, we couldn't win a fucking game in overtime. Now we're winning every single game in overtime. Like, dude, how much does this game hate me? I just want to know that. It is punishing me for absolutely tearing it up with Winnipeg, isn't it? Fuck's sake, dude. Squires will be back very soon. Just throwing Sorelli in here. Like we're we're above 500 now. I I'm I'm absolutely stunned. And now reigning noob is also injured. Two guys got injured. I wonder if Squires can be thrown in there. No, he can't. All right, have fun, Coughlin. I don't. I just don't care enough. You're not gonna get me to care right now. We literally almost made the playoffs. We came from like 14 points down to what now? Like maybe four? Unreal this game, man. Absolutely unreal. And we won that game. What a fucking joke. I mean, we still missed the playoffs, but our pick, <laughs> the value shot down. Absolutely shot down. Like how, let's, how close were we? Can I get to the end of the AHL thing? No, probably not. Are they already playing the playoffs? <sighs> how close were we? One point. One point! From 14. From back 14. We make our team worse at the deadline, and we are one point away from making the playoffs. Get the fuck out of here, EA. Christ, man. We should have been sub-80 points. Should have been around 75 points if we continue to do what we did. Now all of a sudden we decide, oh yeah, we could score a bit more. Oh my god. Just... <laughs> Where was that all year, huh? Where was that all year when we had a good... When we had, like... Fuck, I don't know. Whatever. Just... Look at this. What? This team right here was one point out of the playoffs. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. Mark Stone only had 50 friggin' points. Nice decline. Vaborny almost got 50. That's at least good. But really, Mark Stone, only 9 points on the power play. Uncle Skoden had a 55-point year. Pretty awesome for him. Cam Squires only 58? No, you gotta be at least 60. Even with a few less games played, you gotta be 60, 65. With your kind of skill and what you have around you. No one hit 70 points on this team. Yet we still almost made the playoffs. Jaron Myers led the way for defensemen. Neither goalie did great. How many? How did Bobrovsky do here in his time? He didn't even do good. We just freaking won games. We just decided to win games. That was it. <laughs> Our offense finally decided to show up after not being there all year. And like I said, did we change anything on the offensive side? No. Changed absolutely nothing. Then we just all of a sudden decided to be able to score goals. So yeah, cool. Good stuff. So apparently just go with this coaching staff all next year. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, well there that is. Oh yeah, I need to check the NHL and stuff. Pardon my sarcasm and annoyance in this episode, but I believe it's a bit warranted here. All things considered. John Tavares signed... Wow, they went ham in free agency. They got Tavares and Marner. 
Well, Tavares led in points, so it was a down year scoring-wise for everyone. So we actually caught up towards league average there at the end, I guess. But Tavares led the way in points with 102. McDavid with 99. Didn't quite hit 100. Goal leader, Sexton with 56. Assist leader, Mangione with uh, 68 assists. Not bad. Plus minus leaders. LA has a good line. Okay. Eckford had a pretty good shooting percentage. Sexton. Deadly sniper, though. Game. Sorry. Who's the most clutch? Uh, Stamkos. Nine game winners and 28 goals. No one else comes close. Power play goal leaders. Tupor Ryan with 18. No one at 20. How about point wise? 31's the most. All right. Shorties. Three from our Shan, and that's not a whole lot of points either. Just. Well, six is a lot, actually, for Rust. All right, how about the defensive stuff? Patrick Kane on the aisle. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, Isles. I was thinking of Marner, who went to uh, Penguins as well. There's Mathurin on there, but it's poor face-off percentage. Man, Mathurin, if you just got a good face-off, 75 isn't bad. That's Shifley territory. So it has improved there, but just imagine what Mathurin could be like if he was, like, also a really good face-off taker. He'd be a Selkie candidate, putting up 70-point seasons, a hybrid production guy, doesn't take a whole lot of penalties. Damn, Anthony. Not too bad of a plur. Boom. Bombs here. A good Selkie candidate here. Not a whole lot of ice time, though, so we'll see. Larkin got to be uh, maybe. Oh, yeah, Larkin higher on the... Yeah, Larkin might be the front runner right now in my eyes. Maybe Leah Anderson in there, but not a whole lot <laughs> of face-offs taken. Excuse me. Yeah, it's definitely got to be Larkin, I think. There's Austin Matthews, but it's looking like Larkin. Defensively. Oh, my fucking God. We need some more defensemen here. I mean, 63 points is a really low total for all the defensemen here. So, I mean, you get, it's kind of crazy. No one's hitting 70. I mean, Sergachev's up here. Where the hell are the OFDs? Where's Makar? Where is anyone? But, yeah, no one hit 70 points here. The highest being 63. Kind of crazy. So, Sergachev for Norris, probably. Please. Pretty please. Sergachev for Norris. That'd be awesome. All right, on to goalies. Because that is disgusting to look at. Uko Pekka Lukanen. Vasilevsky, though, above him. And looks like he's on his own up here. Similar records, seven more shutouts. Yeah, I'd say Vasilevsky on his own. Lukanen's close, but the goals against higher, save percentage lower. Similar record, more games played. Three more games played, but 12 goals. That is, you know, four goals, four per game. So, yeah, it's definitely Vasilevsky. On his own, no tie necessary. On to the rooks we go. Cameron Genoway. And Seabrook had a 60-point year. Yeah, they signed all those dudes, man. They're not going to be able to afford this guy later, are they? They're in that win now. I really want to steal Steve Seabrook from him in some way. That'd be really sick. He's a lefty, too. I could chain him to a left winger. He is kind of a goal scorer. How many shots does he take? I, why am I clicking on this? 232, that's a decent amount. Played third line, seriously? Huh. No way, just no way, that can't be right. Third line was 60 points, I mean, it could be, but... He had power play time, and it, and it didn't indicate he had power... Dude, look at this, I guess he did. Holy hell. Yeah, they got a stud, they know they have a stud. There's also Ice Warrior, other guys like this. You know, Ice Warrior, this was his rookie year, 50-point rookie year. Papen, his rookie year, 49 points. There are other power forwards we can kind of look to, obviously. Maybe even some better with the scheme fit. But, yeah. All right, goalies. I already looked at goalies. What am I doing? Those rookies. Rookie goalies. Anyone? No one's going to beat out Genoa. And it doesn't even look like there's anyone who are that good. Or at least with games played. Decent. Decent rookie year for Sogard. Pretty good for Wallstead as well. 
but no one really played that many games. So there you have it. Let's check out the fun stats here. I just want our pick in the top five. That's really all I want. <laughs> no one hit 200 hits, not even close. Fights. Tessier with five, Ice Warrior five, everyone's weak sauce. Rocco Ferrari with three, Dubio with three. Having to rely on our members to keep fighting alive in hockey. <laughs> Mike D up there with a fight as well. 27 points. Yeah, Mike D, definitely a third line type guy. Bit rough being a 13th overall pick, but hey, it is what it is. So there it is. There is your season. What place did we come in in the NHL? Like, in the entirety of things. I just, I just want to know how much we got boned. Fourteen. Yeah, we're not we're not getting to the top five. We are simply not getting to the top five. That pick lost so much fucking value. Good stuff. I love this game. Absolutely fantastic game. Alrighty. We would have been a playoff team if we played like that all year. Would have been a playoff team. So there you go. Welcome to uh getting screwed. Episode four. Maybe even five. I don't know, but getting screwed. With the Vegas Golden Knights, and it's just everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. So you'd think any it, it's only like smooth sailing from here, but as we can see, with he who shall not be named being the top fucking defensive scorer again, on top of everything else that's happening, this is a cursed franchise mode. Can Daryl Champion turn this around? He is our only hope at this point. Oh boy, draft up next. Can we salvage the, the crap? Hopefully. I don't know. Words are hard right now. I am just so flustered. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.